Uh, well, first, I also I want to thank our speakers that have spoken uh, for your fascinating stories and, and insights, and for, of course, highlighting the importance of the event. It's a great job. Um, and also, I want to, I want to let's give a big round of applause to our tireless events director, Kate Perpillos. <laughs> Well, now that uh, most of our speakers, half the, half the panel, or two-thirds of the panel, uh, has hopefully inspired all of you to get involved in the policymaking process, I'm going to tell you how the Roosevelt Institution provides you with a unique opportunity to affect real change in politics. Now, you know, traditionally, the role of young people and students in the political process has been pretty limited, I'd say. Uh, we're often asked to cast a ballot and hold the sign, make phone calls, go canvassing and attend protest rallies, but we are not often asked for ideas and thoughts. What makes the Roosevelt Institution such a revolutionary new brand of youth activism is that it empowers and emphasizes students' ideas. And I think that's what sets the Roosevelt Institution apart from most other student groups. Instead of merely criticizing or complaining about current policy, we in the Roosevelt Institution work to create practical solutions and feasible ways to address the pressing political issues that are facing our world today. And although the idea of drafting policy proposals may seem a bit daunting at first, it, you know, it really isn't. And in fact, as a student, you've actually been doing it all along. Uh, you know, instead of letting your term paper on education reform or health care coverage or, or tax law or anything like that uh, just sit in your professor's filing cabinet for years and years and years, you know, why not use it to actually create a policy proposal and get published? You know, use your homework to work for you. Um, and in addition, as a college student, you have a wealth of resources at your disposal. Think about it, you know, all the libraries here at Hunter and professors, great faculty, and intelligent peers, the one here I'm sure you've met, who share similar interests. Um, and as a student, you are free to dream big about new policy ideas without any major commitments holding you down. And so the Roosevelt Institution exists to empower those ideas and promote student voices in the policymaking process. Our members conduct policy research on issues ranging from environmental protection to equality under the law to social and economic fairness. The Roosevelt Institution connects the fruits of that research to the policy process, delivering sound, progressive proposals to policymakers at all levels of government. As the first and only nonprofit, nonpartisan, national network of campus-based student think tanks, the Roosevelt Institution has achieved remarkable success in its young life. Since its founding just four years ago, the Roosevelt Institution has ballooned to over 7,000 student members and exists at over 80 campuses nationwide. Roosevelt members have published numerous policy and research journals, testified to city councils, and have held meetings on Capitol Hill. Roosevelt chapters hold countless panels, symposia, and conferences every year and they're always reaching out and working directly in the community. Now, uh, although we just started the Hunter College chapter of the Roosevelt Institution this past fall, I think we've already made some pretty good progress, I'd say. Uh, we've been very successful at recruiting members. We created an awesome website for our chapter, which I encourage you all to visit. It's everywhere, I'm sure you've seen it, www.roosevelthc.org. Um, and we've developed close relationships with school administrators and faculty. In October, our chapter hosted New York City Councilman John Liu and our very own Roosevelt Institution Executive Director, who I'm glad to join us, Nate Lowenthal, right here, um, for a panel discussing a new deal for student activism in the 21st century. And in November, we co-sponsored Environmental Week, which was organized by our very own Environmental Policy Center Director, Liz Suter, and I think she's here, right? Liz? There you there she is. Okay. Uh, to promote environmentally sustainable living in New York City. We've also worked with President Rapp, as Jonathan mentioned, uh, on plans to involve our chapter with Roosevelt House, which will open as a new public policy institute in the fall. Our chapter will have a major role to play in Roosevelt House, providing us with the space to do policy research and host events, hopefully, for years to come. Uh, also, I, I want to mention that um, on Friday, March 28th, our chapter will be hosting a major conference on diversity in the policymaking process. Uh, we are planning this event in collaboration with several prominent organizations, uh, including the Center for Social Inclusion, the Drum Major Institute, 
and the Aspen Institute. So check, I encourage you all to check the website and we're going to hopefully you all get involved and come to that. Um, and in closing, just remember that the Roosevelt Institution exists to empower your ideas and to train you to become the progressive leaders of the future. As Roosevelt members, we can truly affect the policymaking process. We can make a real difference, and yes, we can even save the world again. Thank you.